Asexuals, commonly referred to as ace, are those described as lacking sexual attraction to others or having low to absent interest in sexual activity. Despite implications of asexuality existing since the dawn of humanity, asexuality as a sexual orientation and field of scientific research is still relatively new, with the first recognition in a scientific document dating back only 120 years ago. As made evident by the thousands of comments from aces on my video with sex therapists who did not acknowledge aces, asexuality is extremely common, yet rarely recognized in our culture. My name's Anthony Padilla, and today I'm gonna be sitting down with aces to learn the truth behind this sexual orientation that far too many have written off as outrageous or ridiculous. Is asexuality a valid sexual orientation? Or is it really just a way for people who are too scared of a romantic relationship to emotionally regress and avoid human connection altogether? Are asexuals truly able to live happy and fulfilling lives without strong sexual desire? Or are they simply convincing themselves that the deprivation of this basic human desire is normal in an attempt to suppress a deeper or darker insecurity or trauma? Hi, Lauren. Hi. Hello, Andrew. Hey, Anthony. Hey, hey Shelby. Hello. Thank you so much for coming out and teaching me about the wondrous world of asexuality. It's very wondrous. <laughs> what do you consider yourself? Asexual, ace? Um, asexual. Gray asexual. I usually just would use the word asexual, although I haven't used it a lot. Uh huh. Because I yeah. haven't said it many times. You haven't talked about your sexuality. I've never much? talked about it. This is your. My debut. Your debut. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, you're lucky you get this on camera. Yeah. <laughs> what does being asexual entail? The definition is you don't experience sexual attraction. So a straight guy feels about another guy, or a straight girl feels about another girl. I just yeah. feel that about both genders. People are just like 100%. I want to have sex. Mm -hmm. Definitely not me. I'm more like like maybe a 2% type of guy. 2% of the time yeah. you're into it? Like asexual simply means someone who doesn't experience sexual attraction. Mm -hmm. Gray asexual is someone who, you know, experiences just a bit. How long have you identified as asexual? I went to an all-girls Catholic academy, uh -huh. so we were taught abstinence. Oh, mm -hmm. great. <laughs> abstinence is great. Mm -hmm. We even had a club that was called True Love Waits. Oh. <laughs> where we had a whole ceremony where yeah. we're white dresses, we put on Purity rings. The implication from the title alone implies that mm -hmm. love is intrinsically connected with sexual desire. Yeah. I just went along with it to sort of have an excuse to get myself out of dealing with that for a while. And then when I started dating at 21 was when I kind of realized I didn't really work the same way as everyone else. I put it off for so long, I was like, I don't think everyone else feels the way that I feel. Started in high school. Yeah. And, um, you know, everyone was kind of into boys and oh, I. Yeah. I, I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I kiss someone, it's kind of like kissing a wall. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And another thing I said which you didn't like was, yeah. I don't understand cheating. What's the big deal? <laughs> you said that? I said that because I've never understood it. I mean, I have multiple friends. Why not have multiple? <laughs> you know, what's the difference? Yeah. Are there different ways to identify as asexual within the, um, you know, is there a spectrum? Yeah. So you can be like a sex positive asexual, which I am. Yeah. Right? And this is someone who's fine with sex, you know, they're fine with having sex, they're fine with other people having sex. There are sex-repulsed asexuals who will never actually have sex and they have uh, no desire the to. The idea is disgusting to them? Correct. Demisexuals, who are people who are very much asexual, but once they find a partner that they really connect with, uh -huh. then they're like, okay, I'm fine, I'm actually attracted to this person. Right. There are some asexuals who are aromantic, yeah. aka they don't fall in love. There are others who are very much romantic. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, like I do want a, like, a partner, maybe a lifelong partner mm -hmm. who will connect with me emotionally. How do you identify within this spectrum? Asexual, that's uh -huh. the word that I feel the most comfortable with. And I think that I would probably say heteroromantic. You'll find heteroromantic relationships desirable, but that's where it ends. Yeah, which is hard, because that just means I'm dating a bunch of straight guys who don't really get it. <laughs> yeah. Do you find that people commonly assume asexuality is the same as celibacy? Yes. Yeah? Like, very often people think that. I've had people tell me, I'm also celibate, you know, I don't want to have sex anymore this year, and I'm like, <laughs> This year? <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't work like that, okay? Yeah, yeah. Like, this is, a, this is not a seasonal thing. This yeah. is, like, every day. I've, I've dated a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Um, who are not asexual. Yeah. Whenever I do intimate stuff, it's more like kind of like an invasive medical exam. 
Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's how you feel. That's how I feel. Yeah. Like, we're on a date and it's like, oh, this is fun. We're getting to know each other. And I'm like, oh, no, it's this part of the night. It's not that it's necessarily bad. It's just I feel nothing. So it's kind yeah. of awkward. Like, if you imagine taking all the emotion out of it, yeah. it would feel like a medical exam. Oh, yeah. Do you proudly tell people that you're asexual or do you keep that more of a secret? It's like a need to know basis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, if someone, you know, if I'm at a bar or something drinking with some people yeah. and someone comes up to me and I'm like, I really want to <laughs> like, that's when I I gotta let them know. Does that happen to you? It has happened to you. Oh, whoa. I, I swear it's happened to me. I swear. Before we learn more about the wondrous world of asexuality, I want to mention that videos discussing anything sexual, whether it be for educational purposes or journalism, are almost always demonetized by YouTube. Meaning this video will likely earn zero dollars despite the hundreds of man hours and the financial investment required to make this video in every video in this series. When YouTube demonetizes a video, they don't just take the money away, they also suppress the video by recommending it to only a fraction of potential new viewers. This basically means the multi-billion dollar companies behind most of the advertising revenue on YouTube are personally choosing which topics they feel should be discussed based on their own personal values, no matter how close-minded they might be. I personally feel these topics and the people affected by their discussions are extremely important despite YouTube's advertisers blacklisting this content from being discovered. So thank you all so much for supporting this series and subscribing and turning on all notifications so you ensure that you always see each new video as I release it, despite whatever YouTube decides you should or shouldn't see. That's all I wanted to say. Now back to learning about the wondrous world of asexuals. Have you found that it's possible to experience a happy and healthy relationship that doesn't include any any sexual attraction whatsoever? I actually have a loving boyfriend of a year. Yeah. So the answer yeah. to that would be yes. Well, congratulations. Thank you. So, you know, me and my boyfriend do have sex. We are physically intimate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe not as much as the average couple. And for you, it's more about making that intimate connection rather than a, a, a like primal drive that you feel. Right, it's more of an emotional act as opposed to a physical one. My first boyfriend was at 21, and then really quickly he realized that I had never had sex before, uh, and he wasn't okay with that. Oh. He said a lot of things that were pretty manipulative to tell me that there's something wrong with me. Part of me wanted to make it work, and I, at that point, was like, it's my fault, I'm doing something of wrong. Of course, society is constantly telling you that it's normal to feel these things, and if you yeah. if you don't, then it's something wrong there's with you. There's something wrong you. with you. He thought I was making a big deal out of it, and I just needed to get it over with. Yeah but it yeah. didn't matter if I didn't want to. Yeah. So I got out of there real quick. I mean, that takes a lot of uh, strength to get out of a situation like that, especially when you're constantly being told from every angle that you're in the wrong, that yeah. you need to be giving someone something in order to be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. And for a relationship to work. But that sort of led me on the search to figure out like, what is, is there a word for it? Is there something wrong with me? Do I need to go to a doctor? Uh -huh. And that's how I found the word asexual. Right. And that there were other people like me. How do you feel about our culture's affinity for overly sexualizing almost everything? It makes me a little uncomfortable. I mean, most things make me uncomfortable. Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> that's not even an asexual thing. So with, as someone with anxiety, I can really. I'm just, yeah, always uncomfortable. Yeah. I still find it entertaining. I don't oh, know why. You think it's you think sexual things are entertaining to see? I love romantic comedies. Yeah. And like you don't really see the sex on screen. It's about the intimate relationship. Right. So right. it's interesting to me. Watching porn, on the other hand, probably be entertained by like the plots. <laughs> <laughs> People wonder who watches porn for the plot. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Have societal pressures ever made you question your own sexual desires or lack thereof? Yeah, I, I I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I mean, I've seen friends go through just really stressful times and I'm like, that just seems like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> what, like breakups and stuff? Yeah, like, they're, you know, pregnancy scares, <laughs> yeah. pregnancy happening, you yeah. know. Do you plan to have children someday? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> um, more that I'm like scared of the whole pregnancy thing. You're scared of pregnancy more than the children. Oh yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> children, children are scary. scary. Yeah. <laughs> I have no desire to raise a small little human being. <laughs> Has nothing to do with sex or anything. <laughs> right. Just, I just don't have that type of commitment for 18 plus years. Mm -hmm. Just not into small creatures that need something every single moment of their lives until they're 18? Correct. Or plus? 
Or plus, yeah, you got to pay for them to go to college and everything. Yeah. It's, it's too much work. What's something you wish you could say to people who question asexuality as a sexual orientation? First of all, f you. <laughs> Second of all, educate yourself. Third of all, I think all identities are valid at the end of the day. Well, if you look at the other sexual orientations, if you think of it as a box, there's heterosexuality, there's homosexuality, there's bisexuality. What's the opposite of that? Asexuality. So it, it makes perfect logical sense that it exists and it does exist. The idea of sexuality and asexuality, it's never for anybody else, it's for you. Yeah. So it really doesn't need to be anybody else's business. Mm -hmm. And whether you believe asexual is a thing, whether you think it's how they were raised, if they were raised in abstinence like I was, has a factor, why does that matter? Mm -hmm. If that's just how I want to feel, why do you have to have a say in it? Carrot Juice wants to know if you consider yourself to be part of the LGBTQ plus community. There's a little bit of discourse of whether asexuals even belong in LGBTQIA plus spaces oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or in the community at all. And uh, that some people will say we're just straight people looking for attention mm, um, or we don't have different experiences from someone who's heterosexual, mm -hmm. which I would disagree. <laughs> yeah. And even if, you know, we don't have to worry about being kicked out of our houses that I wouldn't compare, but my experience, especially my battle with myself, where mm -hmm. I wasn't accepting of myself, I didn't want to be asexual, Yeah, it was hard. In the LGBT community, there is this, there is still a problem of people who are more than just gay, mm -hmm. right? Like being LGBT stands for bisexual, mm -hmm. and even then bi erasers still exist, both right. in and out of community. So yeah. there's me even more on the fringe as asexual. Yeah. And you know, I don't even have a letter in the acronym. Mm. And it's like, yeah, it's it's a struggle. Patrizia Pai wants to know if you ever find it difficult to find other asexuals who can who understand. I have one friend. <laughs> oh yeah? So you guys connect over that? We, yeah, and she's the only person really that I know yeah. who is, they say maybe one percent of the general population yeah. is. Yeah, I just did the math. That's like 75 million people That's still a lot of world. people. That's a lot of people. Yeah, so they're out there. <laughs> Azor wants to know if you ever wish you had more sexual desires, you know, to, to fit in more. Or do you prefer being asexual? I thought that I would, or I did wish that uh, yeah. when I was just discovering who I was because yeah. I thought it would make everything easier in relationships. I am who I am. I really can't change that. Yeah. Like once I came to the realization that was actually a big moment for me because mm -hmm. I was finally comfortable in the body that I'm in. Mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, we're good to go. What is it about being asexual, if anything, that brings you the most joy? Probably just the fact that it makes it easier to find good people mm -hmm. because people will show their colors much faster if True. you're not giving them what they want right away. Mm -hmm. I guess the, the thing would just more time to, <laughs> to do the things I want to do. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of asexuals agree you got so much more time. The cake. <laughs> what? The cake, you, you haven't found about the cake yet? Not the cake, the one at the end of Portal? That cake is a lie though. <laughs> so not, not that cake. In the asexual community, we absolutely love cake. But don't, don't ask me why. That, does it when have I, to do well, with sexuality? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you're yeah. having sex, don't you want cake more? Like, I think that's just how that works. A good way to understand if you're asexual or not is if when you are experiencing something sexual, you'd rather be having cake. Correct. Has anyone in your life ever made you feel less than? I wouldn't say guys made me feel less than, but they just didn't understand and tried to like push it anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that made me feel like I wasn't being listened to or respected as a person. Right. It was almost like they didn't even accept that to be a reality. I remember I, I told this one guy, I was like, you know, look, I'm asexual. And we had this deep conversation and he's like, I feel like we've gotten closer because of this. And I think then he kissed me or something. <sighs> totally missing the point. Yeah. <laughs> Has being asexual affected any of your relationships? Yes, absolutely. I used to have a like a three month like expiration of any relationship that I was really? in. Really? Like once the honeymoon phase ends? Once the honeymoon phase ended, it was like, this, this just, is it gonna work? Mm -hmm. And that's usually how it went. I wasn't able to communicate this very effectively, uh, right? Communication breaks down overall. I'm not broken. There's nothing to fix here. I'm absolutely perfect. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> Right, never a tear, never a problem in life. You'd be lucky to have me. Do you ever get anxious when you're about to disclose to someone that you're asexual? Oh yeah, you want to yeah. find a person that you can be comfortable doing it with, because like your knees are knocking and you yeah, get it's a, a lot of your teeth clink and 
There's a lot, a lot of that. On it. <laughs> and I'm not clapping. <laughs> is there anything that you would like to say to anyone who is asexual or maybe is considering that they might identify as asexual, but maybe they're they're uncomfortable, maybe they're unsure about coming out because they're afraid of judgment? When I was doing a little bit of self-discovery, I he was using the word broken a lot, and I don't want other people to feel like there's anything wrong with them or anything to be fixed. You're not yeah. broken, mm -hmm. and whatever word you feel like identifying with is there for you to feel comfortable. It doesn't need to be for anybody else but you. You are valid. Don't let anybody else tell you any different. Listen to yourself and be true to yourself. You'll know if you're not attracted to someone, you'll know if you are. Um, don't let people tell you what to do. Don't give in to people just because you think that you should, or just to make them happy, like just, be in touch with yourself and you'll know what orientation you are if you allow yourself to believe the truth about yourself. I actually have a parting gift oh. for you, the best interviewer shirt, which you could get at padildoshop.com, but I'm gonna give it to you for free. Thank you so much. Yeah. Did you make this yourself? Obviously I, I made it. I can tell. <laughs> How is that? It smells free. <laughs> <laughs> the best smell. Subscribe or I'm gonna bake you cake. Wait, subscribe and I will bake you cake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got five seconds to shout out or promote anything you want directly into camera, go. You can find me anywhere on the internet as Shovel or Shelby Graces, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Tumblr. Hi, my album's coming out at the beginning of next year. It's called Psych Ward by Lauren Rhodes. Follow me on Instagram at the Blue Mannequin. I'm just here for shits and giggles, but follow me on Twitter at a different realm. I don't do shit there though. Thank you so much, Shelby. Thank you. I feel like I fully understand the wondrous world of asexuality. I'm so glad. And congratulations on coming out to the entire world. Oh my God, I forgot already. <laughs> <laughs> After spending the day with these aces, I've come to understand how broad the spectrum of asexuality is and just how vastly different sexuality is for each and every person. In a society that encourages diversity and freedom of expression, shouldn't we strive to bring awareness and support for those who don't feel they fit in with sex Sexual standards and expectations. See you later, bye guys. Press the like. A lot of people, when they hear the term asexual, they're mm -hmm. like, oh, do you like split into cells or something? Oh, because it's, they think it means impregnating yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you don't do that? <laughs> no, 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 okay. no. Trust me, I do not do that. Okay, Nor good. do I think I'm capable of doing that. Good, good, good. We cleared that up.